All right, we're going to call to order uh, this meeting of the East Hampton Planning Board for February 16th, 2016. Is there anybody here to speak to something that is not on the agenda tonight? All right. Uh, preliminary matter of planning board minutes. Did everyone get a chance to look at the meeting January 19th yeah, minutes? Yes, we did. I did. I did. I motion to approve the January 19th minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Uh, first item of business, a and for 6 Loudville Road. Uh, they withdrew their application for the moment. They'll be refiling. All right. Done with that. That was fast. New business, uh, 198 Park Street, Williston Northampton School. Yeah. Hi. Um, everyone, we gave everyone a booklet. Uh, I'm Chuck McCullough. I'm the Chief Financial Officer at Williston. And uh, we spoke to Jessica a little while ago, and we wanted to make sure that it, at the right moment in time when we felt like we were in a position to be able to do so, we wanted to uh, come before the planning board and uh, just give you an informational you know, kind of overview of what we're thinking about 198 Park Street. And uh, the, as noted on the uh, cover page, uh, we are looking to uh, plan a solar array on that site. So I uh, wanted to just kind of walk through some of the kind of preliminary ideas on that today. And if there are particular questions that the planning board has, uh, we have with us today uh, representatives from Dynamic Energy who are here with us to be able to answer any questions regarding the, uh, the technical parts of it. We have Mark Reed who's working with us on making sure the site uh, meets all requirements necessary. And Jeff Cannon, our physical plant director, who is here as well. Uh, Eric Ness is our uh, electricity consultant, uh, our, our utility consultant. So uh, just to give everyone a, an overview of what we're thinking about, uh, we just wanted to give you a, a few facts about the solar array that we're, we're contemplating. Uh, what we will be doing, we'll be producing about 800 kilowatt hours, uh, 800,000 kilowatt hours for the school. Uh, we already have two solar arrays on campus, uh, one on top of our athletic center, the other one on top of our hockey room. Uh, once uh, this uh, uh, solar array would be up and running, uh, the school would then be producing over 40% of its electricity through solar. So uh, it will be a, a, a significant change and an improvement to, uh, you know, as far as our overall uh, utilities purchasing uh, plan. Working with Dynamic Energy uh, as our partners, they are the engineers, the installers, the financiers. Uh, they are uh, working at some other large projects. You can Google them. I, I've done that a number of times. Very interesting company to work with. Working with Skidmore College, they've done a, a very large array there, and they're working right now with Hobart and William Smith Colleges. That's ongoing right now. Great. That's where right. planning goes. Uh, Heritage Surveys has been uh, helpful to us, obviously, in laying out the site and making sure that we are uh, meeting all requirements necessary in that regard. Uh, some things that we, we just, we've been considering all along institutionally is that anything like this is a visible green initiative. We've been trying to do that and trying to do projects like that on campus so the students recognize it. Uh, we want to make sure that we're thinking about what the school is going to be like 20, 30 years from now. Renewable energy uh, is definitely part of what we are, our plans. And uh, regarding 198 Park Street, just a very practical matter, I don't know if anyone's been out to that site, but you know, there's a collapsed barn on it, and, and we, we wanna make sure that that site gets cleaned up in the process of doing all that, and that's definitely in our plans, our immediate plans. Uh, as far as the education opportunities, uh, I had the opportunity to talk to uh, some other representatives in town just to let them know uh, this isn't just for Williston in terms of an informational source. We're going to be trying to make sure that uh, there's information available to the public schools as well as Williston. We're going to be using this as a classroom uh, for the students to be able to come out, look at the site, and understand what solar energy is, how it works, and how this particular array works, and how it's generated, what, what type of electricity it's generating. Uh, to that end, you know, it will, there will be a, uh, just a small shed on campus, on that site, just to be used for a classroom, just a, just a portable shed so that we can just keep people out of, you know, if it's raining or whatever, but to have that be an opportunity for people to go on site and, you know, conduct class there. Uh, we will be uh, setting up monitors on campus, but certainly would be willing to work with the uh, uh, public schools with that as well. There are monitors you can put on the wall 
and it shows in real time what's going on. Very interesting uh, aspect to this. And certainly tours of the facility would also be something that would be available. Uh, as far as the location goes, this is the, uh, a map of the location at 198 Park Street. Uh, there's Park Street right there. There's Whitebrook Middle School. Uh, the area that you see with, uh, right just below the 198 Park Street uh, site is that is the entrance to uh, Whitebrook. So the long driveway that goes in and out, that's the location. Um, just to give you a little better idea from a topography standpoint, just so you can get a handle on uh, where the driveway is and where the site is. Uh, as far as a, a construction goes, uh, you know, I think you've all seen solar arrays along the Mass Pike and, you know, in different locations. But it really is uh, framing like this that would be put on the ground. Uh, there's some design that goes into how it's going to be attached to the ground, or, and, uh, and I leave that for the more technical folks. Uh, but you also, you know, you can see that some of the framing that's put up would be uh, where the panels would be mounted, and then ultimately the panels are mounted on uh, on the framing that's established. These are just samples. So this is a, just to give you an idea that there, there would be at least one location where we might have to do some work like this. Again, we may or may not, but I'm going to leave that to uh, Dynamic Energy to answer any questions that you might have in that regard. As far as the solar array layout is, this is a very preliminary, uh, but uh, this is after all the work done by Mark Reed and Heritage Surveys. That area that you see in the upper left is uh, there's uh, some buffer zones and some things we have to consider. Uh, there may be opportunity to use some of that area or not, but uh, first blush, we wanted to see if we could fit it all in, not in uh, buffers, you know, what would be 100 foot buffer zone. Mark, you might want to comment on that. Sure. But, um, but that will give you uh, a, kind of a, a quick idea of what we're thinking about. And uh, we own the property, and uh, we're, we've done all the survey work, we've done all the uh, wetlands work. Uh, we're just waiting right now for the utilities to sort of give us an approval, and then Dynamic Energy can start in on the work, uh, which will be, I'm sure, coming back before uh, whomever they need to for appropriate permitting and guidance from the city. <coughs> so I'll leave it at that. Is there anything I haven't touched on that needs any color, or are there any particular questions on the plans? Just, just real quick, um, and I, I appreciate you guys coming and getting us up to speed on the project. That's really helpful. But um, it sounds like this is relatively imminent. Is that is the plan to sort of move forward in the near future, or do you have a timeline? Or um, I'm, I, you know, we'd like to do it as, as soon as possible. That, you know, there's benefit, you know, operational benefit as soon as sure. possible. But I mean, we want to make sure that we do it right. So I'll leave it to uh, maybe you guys can comment on that. Uh, yeah, so as, uh, as mentioned, the, the first thing that we need to wait for is the utility interconnection, which they're in the process of reviewing, and that can take anywhere from uh, 30 days to 90 days. Okay. So at, at that point is when we would uh, put together a full, a full presentation with uh, water, uh, stormwater management plans, ENS plans, and come back to the board with uh, the, the full package of, of our engineering. Okay. So that's all you're waiting for is the electric companies to give you okay? <coughs> at, at this point, that's what we're waiting for, yes. But you're going to be using their poles and that for direct, aren't you? Yes, we will be connecting directly into the utility, and uh, we will install uh, approximately four utility poles kind of on the corner of the property that will uh, uh, carry you know, a recloser and some metering equipment. You're using the gray colored panels, right? The or whatever. The well, I'm sorry, I didn't hear we sold the panels. The oh, uh, yeah. the darker colored panels. Yes. Because I understand that they're come out with now. You can see through them. Uh, yeah, we we will be using the uh, a colored panel. You won't be able to see through them. I just wanted to to point out two things. One is we've already gone through conservation commission to confirm the wetland boundaries so as jeff was saying that there are uh, wetlands located on the property here and here and these are the 100 foot buffer zones associated with those so that this current layout as you can see is um 
the panels are outside the 100 foot buffer zone. Just a little bit of the fencing would be in the buffer zone. So we would do another filing with the Conservation Commission to confirm the proposed work under their jurisdiction, as well as your board. What kind of fencing and security stuff do you have there for this kind of facility? Uh, typically we would install a uh, six foot high chain link fence, have two points of entry, <coughs> and they would be locked. Any other questions, folks? Anybody um, from the public here have any questions? I got a question. Oh, sorry, Aaron. Does anybody approach a neighborhood in this thing? Um, yeah, and there's. We ended up, uh, we had a presentation about, what about, about a month and a half ago, two months ago? Yes. We've got to turn remember the presentation. And we, we had at that also like, and, and all of a butters the butters work. notices went out. Yep. Yeah. That was specifically for yeah. wetlands delineation, but through that process, uh, uh, the people, the, the, the people that came to the meeting uh, uh, certainly were aware of what we were uh, interested in doing. In support of it, so yes. I was very uh, interested and in, uh, very uh, intrigued by what we were thinking about. Mm -hmm. Seemed happy that 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 kind of thing was going to be used done on the site as opposed to a building. Yep. Anything else, folks? Any other questions? Thank you for letting us know. Yeah, thanks right. a lot, guys. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it very much. Yeah, have a good night. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want to go in and snow and stuff like that. They're only going to come back. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. You don't need the <coughs> no, I don't. All right. Uh, next up, 412 Main Street, Yankee Hill Machine. Request for a special permit. There's somebody who wants to speak to this. Just sort of give us an overview of the project. Oh, Marcus. Double duty. Yes. All right. Yes. <laughs> yes. More. Bear with me one second. Sure, no problem. Oh, no, let's get this up so the board members can see. Thanks a lot. Well, that's mine, Chuck. Oh. <laughs> you, you, you sure you want? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And steal my stuff. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Graham, who are co-owners of Yankee Hill Machine, are here tonight. They are currently located on Ladd Avenue in Northampton, which is known as Bay State section of Northampton. Um, Tom Miranda, their attorney, is also here tonight to answer questions that the board may have. And um, we're very excited about the upcoming purchase of a vacant building on Main Street um, so that Yankee Hill Machine can relocate their business into East Hampton and provide jobs and um, revenue to the town or to the city. So currently this is a two parcel site being 12.7 acres of active area, which is located between Main Street and the rail trail, the old bike path, and a 14 acre parcel of land, which is located on the west, I'm sorry, on the south side of the bike trail, 
um, which is vacant and pr uh, comprised mostly of wetland areas. The site itself is, I flip to this colored rendering, make it a little easier. As you can see, out of the 12.7 acre parcel of land, about 50% or more is wooded and contains wetlands. So the active site that uh, we're talking about is only about um, six acres or so that are being used. There's an existing building which used to uh, um, be operated by J.P. Stevens and then Article Tech purchased it and they've closed and moved consolidated business up to Greenfield with the site itself. <coughs> Maybe I can just bring this over here, make it easier. So as I mentioned, um, Yankee Hill Machine is under a, a buy-sell agreement to purchase this property. Uh, going through the East Hampton zoning re regulations, um, it requires a special permit from the planning board to operate their uh, manufacturing business on the site itself. Yankee Hill Machine um, is a manufacturer's and machines uh, parts for guns. So they currently ha are doing that and have been doing that since 1951, when mm -hmm. his grandfather uh, started the business and mm -hmm. his parents I ran it. Father. Now they're mm -hmm. taking over mm -hmm. the parents. So, so long-standing business within uh, uh, Northampton and moving over here. Nice. We're also in the wireless communication overlay district, which doesn't really apply to us because we're not looking for a cell tower. <laughs> <laughs> but that, those are the two zoning districts that we're in. Um, it is zoned properly for the use of the business and as the application says the building itself will not change there will be cosmetic changes to the building to clean it up refresh it it needs some work make it a little more attractive the existing sign that's out there will be utilized will change from Argotech to Yankee Hill Machine so there's really no change in signage at all um, with this proposed project. The interior modifications to the building, which will include um, construction of a new retail showroom, which is about 800 to, to 1,200 square feet. And we provided customer parking, as well as handicapped parking designated on the site itself where somebody's coming in and wants to uh, for walk-in business for the area. Manufacturing is about 38,150 square feet, which is within the building itself. Um, they currently uh, tie and bond out of Westfield, work with them to make sure that they're in full compliance with all state and federal requirements for for their oils and, and uh, exhaust fumes and whatever might come associated with their business in itself and we'll be updating that um, plan for the new facility. Uh, I, I gave one copy to Jessica with the application. It's quite thick. For that, so. Is this the compliance plan you're talking Correct. about? Correct. Yeah. So you uh, received this in an email. Very, very involved, very involved uh, piece of document. Mm -hmm. We're not proposing to cut any trees, so the lighter green area is lawn. We're not proposing any work in the darker green whatsoever. Um, the demands on city utilities are low. They don't require a lot of water or... or don't generate a lot of uh, effluent from the site itself. It's only bathrooms so for the for the uh, mm. business that they have. Parking. Luckily, the site has quite a large existing parking area. Per the zoning, it requires that 
um, the size of the building divided by 600 square feet um, is the number of parking spaces, which is 83, or 0.75 of your two largest shift changes. There, 60 employees would be daytime, and if they get to full capacity during the second shift, they'd be 30 to 40. So that in itself, if you had the 60 and 40, goes 100.75 to 75 parking spaces. We're providing 103 parking spaces on the site, um, in, which includes um, 93 designated for employees, uh, five handicap and five uh, visitors parking, so that we're over either calculations relative to parking for the facility itself. The existing curb cut, no change. I'm not going to change that. Um, for that area whatsoever. Potentially, uh, as they grow, they may have three shifts. The third shift, once they get up in operation, um, they hope to be able to grow to have a third shift, would have about 30 or 40 employees. Are there two shifts right now? Right now, um, they, they have two shifts. We currently have a single shift, and we're working on building a second shift. Okay, so the plan is to start off with two and then grow to three? Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. For them. Within the application, there's there's modifications in the building itself that meet all state and federal requirements. For instance, uh, there's an indoor shooting range um, required to test their product. Um, it will be located in the middle of the building and soundproofed, not only for anyone that lives around it, but their own employees. They don't want their own employees to listen to the shooting rings and to be a distraction to them. <laughs> so it will be. Um, there's also other um, mechanical equipment that also uh, will be you know, within the building itself, for instance, a coolant evaporator, paint booths, welding, all part of manufacturing um, for the building itself. All that is going to fall under that document that Chet has, <coughs> um, part of tie and bonds training and how to properly maintain that. It's, it's all part of state and federal reg regulations. Do, do you have a specific customer for this or is it bid uh, you send it out or they come in? Most of our business actually comes from the general civilian so the public. Um, we do also provide to uh, law enforcement agencies and uh, actually a lot of college campus for security services as well. So it's just a large array from the public to Correct. Yeah. So yeah. We do do some, uh, some government contracting as well. Yeah. So that's the general overview of what Yankee Hill is being proposed on this site. Um, and we can answer any questions that anyone yeah. might have. Bunch. Sure, you want to start? And I know that um, <coughs> Jessica emailed copies of uh, review comments from Doucette that we received this afternoon. Yeah. Um, and we can talk about that. Those are yeah, maybe we should start with that yeah. stuff. So yeah. Sure. <clears throat> so, their review comment number one yep. is the recommendations about spot grades, checking to make sure that we're in full compliance with handicap accessibility and ramping, um, which we can do. Um, just didn't have enough time to do it this, this afternoon. Yep. Uh, this area is well under the standards of 2% cross pitch for any handicapped parking spaces. Um, there is a ramp that I checked going up. This is the only area which is under the 5% requirement for uh, sidewalk. Uh, then this is across here is flat. So the general public or anyone that comes in to visit, um, salesmen or prospective clients would come in the front door. 
All the other doors are locked. Uh, there's currently an employee entrance here, which is locked and only be able to be accessed by employees of Yankee Hill Machine. So it's all going to be controlled through that area. Also within the building itself, um, there is separation um, in restricted areas for the showroom so that somebody that com comes in there can't get access to the manufacturing section of it. Okay. With that, so. um, before you go on, on that number one, I just want to ask a couple questions. We're talking sure. about um, the uh, ADA requirements Correct. at this point. And I have it from our local ADA official that you, you four spots are required. I think you have five in the parking lot. Can Correct. you confirm that that's true? Correct. Okay. Um, and uh, this is a little bit off topic, but since we're talking about the parking spots really quickly, I noted that you used the 600 square footage in your, for your calculation of how many spots to have. So I just want to ask this so that I understand, because I think I'm understanding there's a retail component to this as well. So the retail calculation says it's 300 square feet to calculate parking spots, whereas the manufacturing calculates 600, so there's kind of a balance there. Right, between the two, between the two. And the retail is only 1,200 square feet. So divided by three is only four spaces. We've got five spaces for customer. So we kind of bumped it up and also you know, providing handicap to somebody's handicap as a visitor right. or an employee. But we did, you know, th put in another handicap space to be above the minimum requirement of four um, to handle either uh, an employee that might be handicapped or a general public. And one of the spots is large. It's like a van size space. Is that Correct. Right? Um, one has to be by regulation of right. van accessible. Your first handicap space has to be van accessible. And then all others can be standard, right. uh, what everyone's used to. So we have one van accessible and then four additional handicap spaces. Thank you. Um, for the area. But within, that's why we kind of put that five space there to go through that 1,200 square feet for the retail part of it. Um, we needed four and we have the space and we put an extra one in there. Thank you. Being positive. The walk-in business aspect of it, um, maybe Chris or, or Kevin can talk about that. It's not, it's not like it's um, minute by minute. Right. right. <laughs> I have a lot of questions about that. Maybe we should get that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why, why don't we can hold off on that. Let's work on these okay. things here first. Sure. And then we can. Okay. Um, no, item number two is that the uh, they're suggesting that we delineate an area showing for sto snow storage um, and keep that outside the 100 foot buffer zone. There is a lot of room on the site currently for snow storage. Um, we have all this area here for snow storage that's outside the 100 foot buffer zone. We have this area here and this area here for this kind of taking, you know, taking care of that area. So, so we could. Um, revise the plan and show you know s snow storage areas. Show me again where the trash is. Where your so bins. trash is is all the recyclable material is inside the building. It's not outside. Um, so that all the the metal shavings and so forth from the machine uh, machining of the parts is maintained in recycling bins inside the building. There will be a dumpster in the back. There's th currently three loading docks doors in the back of the building. <coughs> they don't have the required, they don't need three. <coughs> they could get away with one loading dock and, and the other one. So we're going to utilize one of the overhead doors to have trash for waste, general waste. So it's going to be in the rear of the building. Thanks. It's, it's still stored inside. Pad. What's that? Still stored inside, or is it on the? Is it an exterior loading dock, or? Yeah. Okay. It's an, yeah, it's, there are overhead doors. That um, there's three overhead doors, and there's within the application we got pictures. Oh right. right. And it shows a picture of the overhead doors in the back. That is a covered space, also. Okay. Right. <coughs> yeah, on the uh, shavings and stuff like that, mm -hmm. that you're going to recycle, is that? Picked up by a special company or? Correct, yeah. We, um, we currently have a um, material recycling company that comes in monthly and removes our scrap. <coughs> that's, 
Don't take care of the uh, <coughs> oil also? Yes. yes. <coughs> is 99% of our cutting fluid is water soluble, which yeah. is where the water evaporator comes in, which uh, Mark, Mark had mentioned before. Um, and at that point, once it's <coughs> evaporated, we have another recycling service come in and reclaim the, um, the rest of the solution after the water has been evaporated yeah. from it. That's what I was mostly interested in, yeah. is the recycling, who picks it up or what, if it was. You guys may use any uh, trichlorothalene or uh, mineral spirits no, or acetone <laughs> or any of that kind of stuff? No. Huh? Mm -hmm. are, are you 9, 000, uh, ISO 9000 certified? We are not 9000 certified. You're not? Okay. So, so there will be a dumpster in the back. Okay. And there's an overhang so that you can access it. So that um, you know, the the hauler can come dump it out here and take care of it. And then that leaves two overhead loading dock doors for deliveries for um, their needs. Um, any other questions on that one? Okay. Number four is uh, we recommend the applicant determine the the largest truck which will maneuver throughout the site. And this facility has been in use since 1971, and there's been lots of tractor trailer trucks in and out of the building. Um, I took a look at that today, and a 50 foot, 53 foot tractor trailer truck, um, there is ample room to come in. There's, as you can see, there's kind of two Ys here yep. that come in, either back up here or back over here, and exit. Um, so this is the main route for the truck traffic coming through. So it will the site will accommodate, you know, 53 foot long tractor trailer trucks. Give me some perspective. Is that what we consider an 18 wheeler? I yeah, an 18 wheeler. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. A large 18 wheeler. A large 18 wheeler. Okay. Yeah. 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 That you see, you'll, you'll see the uh, as you're driving down the turnpike or 91, you see 53 on the box mm -hmm. part of it. Well, that designates that it's 53 feet in length uh, for a tractor trailer truck. Is that the largest size truck you guys have or you anticipate having? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's only one That's vendor that has that large truck. Yep. Most of them are smaller. Yeah. Right. Okay. UPS, Federal Express, um, and other, you know, carriers like that. Yeah, I think their largest trucks, FedEx, or UPS is their 48. Okay. Um, item number four, um, talking about the three eight-hour shifts and the retail components. We kind of talked about that um, already. Five. That's number five I have. I'm oh, sorry, yeah. five. You're right, Chuck. Yeah. Yeah. Get my glasses. Chuck. <laughs> um, number five. Um, currently, and if you drive by, and I just came from Southampton, so it was nice, there is... Lighting in the front of the building, there's three lights here, there's a light here, and one on either side of the entrance that light up the front of the building. So there really isn't any lighting in the parking lot itself. So that's something that we need to look into, whether we do wall packs, um, and whether we shed those, that light out with new LED lighting, um, really gives you a, an awful lot of light. or we need to we need to um, put some poles in, and that's something that we can investigate. Okay. Yeah. Um, for that um, area um, within the park. So. Number six um, is the existing on-site stormwater system. We are not proposing any change in utilities. Uh, of any kind, including the stormwater system. We recognize that um, that the existing catch basins need to be cleaned and, and repaired. Um, you know, they're, bu they're buying this property. We haven't really investi fully investigated what needs to be changed or upgraded relative to that, um, which we will be doing. There are also um, will be annual maintenance of these catch basins, all catch basins get pumped out on a regular basis to make sure they're clean. Is that a properly. time level? 
and yep, and sediment be removed, sand and other sediment that might have not count during the clear There are a couple of catch basins in the lawn area in the front um, because the roadway is a little bit higher here. It dips down and then it kind of has a little swale through the middle section of it back up to the building. So um, we're definitely going to be inspecting the system. It's their benefit because they're going to be living with it sure. and make any modifications necessary to um, make the corrections for that. And to see where it says that they'll be inspected and cleaned if necessary. That right. I'm sure they need to be. Will be. Yeah, will be. <laughs> I'm sure they're going to be, you know, definitely needed to be cleaned. Right. Because then you got a, you got a starting point. You know that everything's clean and everything's working. Right. And you're moving on. <clears throat> the item number seven is the um, applicant states that the existing drainage system within the building has been sealed. Way back, previous owners, there used to be a floor system of drainage in the building itself. That subsequent, when Argotech, I believe, uh, purchased the building, they sealed it. We're gonna ensure that, working with Ty and Bond, that there is no you know, floor drains that are still in there, because that doesn't meet state and federal requirements. Right. Inspect the ones that are there to make sure they are sealed. Well, actually, the ones that are there, we're going to seal right off with concrete. <coughs> oh, that's we're going to eliminate them all together. We don't want to... Put in a new system? Right. Yeah, okay. That's right. Better. Everything's going to be upgraded um, within the building itself to today's standards um, for that. So that um, we don't want any possibility of any thing within the building to enter into the stormwater system um, and come all the stormwater drains down to the wetlands in the back. So that's you know, definitely a concern that as the new owners have um, that we want to address and we'll be addressing. Okay. Um. So, I mean, it sounds like we're going to need some more information, but do you guys want to ask more questions? I'd like now? to just start off with, uh, tell me, uh, I, I want to know more about this. I want to know, um, I want to know more about the retail component, the kinds of clients that are coming in. I want to know, are you manufacturing just parts of firearms, or are you manufacturing and assembling your own uh, firearms then being tested? I want to know how you are selling them. Sure. Tell so me everything. Right now, we currently make uh, firearm parts for a variety of different firearms. And we also produce a complete rifle that we assemble and test. Um, currently, at our current location, uh, we don't have any kind of a retail component to it. There's no showroom or anything like that. Um, so we have a sales network through different distributors and dealers and firearms. And then we have um, our website where we sell retail. Um, basically, the way that everything is ran right now is uh, if it's anything, what we say, with a serial number, so anything that's controlled. Um, any sort of government entity, we don't sell it, except for um, to our dealers, our pre-licensed dealers. Um, our plan with the retail side of things is to be able to have a showroom where people come in and can handle the product and come and make an informed decision because it's a lot easier than trying to buy something off the website. Um, and our intention too is to be able to offer the firearms for sale as well. Um, obviously, we have to go through the same process of background checks and everything that we would at any other federal license fire and dealer would have to go through. So, yeah. Does that mean a prospective client could uh, contact you and say I'm really interested in your great product yeah. and then come in and see it mm -hmm. and, and maybe test it in the range that you're building? No, the something? range would only be Sorry. for our own manufacturing purposes. Right, it won't be open to the public. Right. So and who can use the range? Only YHM employees. And for what reasons? Just for product testing to make sure that physically well, that means if uh, I or a customer comes in and says, I'm interested in this arm, firearm, but I want to test it, <coughs> what then they do? Can they Under test it on there, they or they not. have to go to they would, an independent point, uh, firearms area? Correct. They would, at that point, you know, have to um, basically look up a dealer within their area who might have the product that has a range of their facility. And then the weapon will go there. 
or depending upon whether they have licensing or not. How do you handle that distribution? Right now you're sending it to dealers. Yeah. Will you continue to do that? Yeah. Or yeah. Well, could someone walk away? Yep. And how does it leave you and go to the dealer? Uh, basically, um, the way that the ATF works is for the general firearms, um, basically we just have to keep a copy of the records and they come in and do typically a every three to five year inspection of those records. Um, so when the firearm is boxed up to leave the facility, uh, it basically gets logged out of our electronic acquisition and disposition record um, with the information of that dealer who it's going to. And then when they receive the firearm, they do the same thing when they log it into their system and ultimately log it out to their customer. Yep. If I was to want to take a look at your firearm, do I have to make an appointment? You can't just walk off the street or with what we're have proposing with the with the retail showroom is it is basically we'll have a showroom where somebody can, can come in during our regular business hours from seven thirty to four. They can come in and you know, talk to a sales representative at our facility, um, look at the general product and um, we're not sure how we're gonna work it yet, but we're planning on having um, some firearms um, available so that they can physically see the product um, out in the showroom. That's standard at most dealers that, you know, if you go to buy a firearm, they let you handle the product. It's not loaded, of course. I mean, right, I just wanted to know how they were going to set that up. I realize that it's how I buy firearms. And, that, and that's all contingent on you guys getting federally licensed for this as well, correct? That's right. Yeah. Under our current licensing, we can dispose of firearms to individuals. Mm -hmm. um, but what we would do is seek a separate license to do the retail side of things yep. and keep the retail aspect totally separate, separate books from the manufacturer. Yeah. Now in order to test it, it means you have to have some ammo on site. Yeah, correct. How's that being stored? Uh, right now they're stored in a locked area that only specific employees can get to. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually uh, electronic key, so only people with those keys can get in and it keeps a record of who goes in and out. Yep. And the firearm um, assembly and storage areas are controlled the same way. Correct. Do, do you have a general idea from sort of your current retail sales, I guess, your direct sales, like the local geography, you know, is this, or do you have a lot of local customers that you expect may come to you directly or, or do you not really know it's, at this point? It's hard to say. I would say on average, if we have one person contact us and say, hey, I'd like to come into your showroom, maybe one person every three months says that. Okay. Um, sure. Every once in a great while, like once or twice a year, someone will stop by and say, I found your address on your website. What can I look at? And we basically go, well, we have a lobby. <laughs> yeah. um, but well, there's we, not really a high demand of people coming in and doing a lot of the you, shopping on site. Yeah, one we rifle, used one to have a right sporting right. outfit here in East Hampton on Route 10, but that sort of closed. <laughs> right. You're looking to expand to have more products. Mm. Potentially, you know, it definitely helps with the local um, customer to physically come in and buy, you know, even if they just need a site or something. It, that, that side of it really helps them a lot. Um, we don't really foresee the retail side of it really taking off. You know, like, it's like a full on Dick's Sporting Goods type of store, we don't picture that whatsoever. It's just. It'd be great if we got to that level yeah. today. <laughs> it's been just to help supplement our product line and help inform the user of, about our product with hands on factory tech, essentially. Yeah, factory direct pricing and factory direct sales staff, too. Well, and hopefully, once you have a retail store, you there would be more. Right. People that would be interested, you know what I mean? <coughs> right. Now, so. right. Building security. Yep. You talked a little bit about the ammo. Box. Yep. Can you tell me a little bit more about uh, the cameras? Yep. Doors, Our plan is to do full camera monitoring um, at a very minimum of the entrances. There's really only three entrances the main entrance, the main manufacturing entrance, and then the secondary entrance at the rear of the building. Um, but right now, at our current facility, all of the controlled areas also have um, CCTV monitoring. Mm -hmm. Um, and general security of the building, um, we're going to go through and rehaul the entire alarm system that's in it. Because um, basically the answer that we got from the current owners is, we know it's there, we don't know how it works. <laughs> uh, and that wasn't satisfactory to us, obviously. Right. So. Yeah, also at our current facility, too, is each of these secured rooms, which he spoke about for the firearms and stored, those are each under their own secured, um, <coughs> secured system as well, with their own separate codes. So essentially, one of our buildings that we're in now has three security codes, for depending on different what room you're in. And is that the plan for this facility as well? <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. We actually uh, we hope to put electric locks, even you know, coded to the employee's ID badge on the external mm -hmm. doors. How many employees did you say? Uh, we have about 60 people right now. 60. Yeah, so we're pretty much a full shift. 
Is anyone in there dedicated to security? Um, I wouldn't say anybody's dedicated. But, um, our safety manager also kind of manages the security aspect of things, make sure that the cameras are operating properly, things like that. So those badges you talked about, say I'm working in section B or A, yep. will that badge allow me to go say to section C? It'll only be basically, it'll have like a magnetic strip or something and it'll right. only like clearance in whatever area right. we allow access to. So you can't jump from one place right. so to another. Right, so someone in general manufacturing could get in the front door but couldn't say get into the ammunition storage or something like that. Yeah. The range is, oh, I'm sorry, I'm jumping in. I'm just going to go ahead. The range is uh, in the center of the building. Correct, yeah. Uh, what is the anticipated uh, noise, do you think, if I was standing in the parking lot? Here's in the parking lot, my goal is to have it where we really can't hear it because, you know, we can't have it where inside an employee can't be around it and have it be so bad that there's going to potentially cause hearing damage either. So, you know, it's beneficial for us to keep it quiet inside. So, you know, our plan is to have it where it's barely hear, uh, audible outside. Um, we currently do test firearms at our, at our current facility, and you can't really hear it outside at all. It sounds like a light bump at most. And it's a very low-tech, non-soundproof system. Basically, yeah. we just build the box inside the building with ventilation. Yep. This one will be a bit more. This one will be a bit more sophisticated. Cool. Yep. It'll be um, installed by Savage Range Systems yes. out of Westfield, <laughs> who is mm -hmm. a nationally known indoor firearms um, installer as well. Yeah, they do complete ranges and everything. So. Yep. Harry? Once you're up and running, would you ever consider having tours in there? Um, people ask for tours all the time because we our product is ITAR regulated. Mm -hmm. Tours can get a bit tricky. Um, what does that mean, ITAR regulated? Uh, what does that stand the for? International, International trade, trade and Export. Something R. <laughs> right. Regulations. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like, uh, basically, because we deal in firearms components, um, everything from the components themselves to the drawings to even the information booklets are controlled. They can't leave the country, um, and foreign nationals can't have access to that if they do come in. Um, so, what we do for tours are typically we have um, an ATF examiner class comes in uh, to do the tour of the facility, so they've all been through the proper background checks and everything to be. Part of ATF. Yeah. Um, so we do some educational classes with them, but if a retail customer comes in and says, you know, hey, I heard about you, can I see your shop? Sorry, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm talking about like like the high school level, like you know, freshman or sophomore in high school, or maybe eighth grader or something, somebody could see a, a machine facility and say, well, maybe mm -hmm. I want to be a machinist, that kind of thing. That's right. We have done um, a couple of tours recently with the Northampton High School with the engineering department group, where they actually came in and saw the facility and saw how our engineering side of things work, and then visited floor um, and saw the actual machine equipment and that type of thing. So Obviously, the controlled areas, they're not allowed into right. it. Um, even when the, th the uh, controlled products right. are in the manufacturing process, we have walking cabinets that travel with the parts. So even if the operator, you know, leaves to go take his 10-minute break, everything gets locked back up and accounted for. Other than the schools, sure. say you have a group of East Hampton people that want to see how it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, 10, 12, 15 people. You do background checks on them before they do the <laughs> tour? <laughs> no. No. We, uh, we generally don't do it to the general public. No. Um, I mean, it's, the, it's not as easy as just calling them Nick's yeah. the background check right. because the system's not designed right. for that. Yeah. Right. No, I was just the, the way you were talking that. about background checks. Yeah, right. It's basically just for buy and sell. Yeah. Right, right. We actually, just so you know, um, any of our uh, current employees, when they fill out an application, we do provide or do a background check on any of our employees as well when they're applying for the That job. was my next question. Yeah, anyone who would be prohibited from possessing a firearm, they don't, we don't allow them, even allow them to work for us in any capacity. Okay, now, th now the shooting range, getting back to that, it, mm -hmm. you said in the application that it's going to be done during normal business hours. Yes. If you end up running three shifts, what would normal business hours be for the shooting range purposes? The shooting range would honestly only be first shift. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and with the potential to go into third shift, the intention is to not be able to hear it outside the building. Right? Is there Our any intention is to not be able to hear it inside the building outside <laughs> of the right. shooting area. Right. right. Is there anything else involved in the manufacturing process that creates noise that might be heard outside the building? We don't have a foundry or forge or anything like that, so there's no you know heavy impact or anything like that. Um, 
exhaust fans, right? I noticed there's a couple places where there's ventilation and stuff. Anything that there's, generates there's any real... There's a few exhaust fans existing that we plan to use. Uh, there's already an existing paint booth in the place that we plan to, you know, bring up to our standards <coughs> with our paint booth system mm -hmm. um, to eliminate emissions and things like that. Uh, there shouldn't be any new sources of noise, and even those fans, you know, they're not going to be running 24 hours a day anyway. Okay. And then the general machining... I don't really know how to describe it. Um, I mean, it's at the OSHA level where the employees have to wear earplugs, but outside of our current, you know, building where you can see gaps through some of the windows like that, you can't hear the manufacturing sounds. So. Okay. And the building is going to be uh, air conditioned and heated, so it's not like there's going to be overhead doors open with wide open access or anything like that. And no other emissions. I mean, you mentioned the the paint shop, that sort of thing. I mean, nothing that you can sort of smell or. Nope. What we have is I believe that we've provided you with a copy of it. We have a um, EPA approved paint booth that we currently use that uh, meets all the regulations for the paint extraction. Um, we plan on using that at the new facility as well. Okay. Yeah, and the coolant evaporator too has already been tested to make sure that the emissions from it um, meet the standards so that a permit isn't necessary for it. And once everything is up and running at the new building, we want, we're going to have all of that reinspected to make sure that everything still meets those specifications. Mm -hmm. Does your machining use water? It uses water in the coolant process. Yep. Um, so it's not like we're constantly running water through the machines. Right. So about how much are you using? They have about a 30 gallon holding tank in it. And you know, for the most part, once you fill it, you have to top it off maybe once a week in the summer if there's high level of the heat, that type of thing. And you know, it's only two or three gallons to top it off. So you know, our, our water level consumption is very low. And the impact on the sewer system is literally but don't you guys change that water on the machines? We do, uh, and that's where the water evaporator comes into play. Yeah, I mean, I used to work at Berkshire. I was there for like 15, 20 years, and yep. we used to change that like like maybe once a week, you know. We generally utilize ours, you know, on the monthly side of it. It all depends on how busy we are. Um, the new ones that we have, uh, antibacterial and fungal. Um, solutions inside of it now, so it allows the water to be in the tank for longer before it gets that pretty smell to it. At least they have their own uh, triclethrane still out there. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You know, strike like that yeah, spot. I don't use any of that. <laughs> <laughs> Can you show me in that parking area where you anticipate <coughs> your retail component, your uh, guests would be, where your employees will park? Sure. Oh, how is that? Sure. Can you show the so difference? we I have need to know the, understand the flow of sure. parking. Yeah. We have five designated. Um, customer parking spaces right here. Um, Those are we will have signage spots. Yes. We yes. will have signage. Okay. So if he's a non-handicap uh, customer coming in, there's five spaces right here. Um, they come up the sidewalk in the front of the building and enter the front of the, the, the facility. There. And all the other spots are for employees. And then we have five handicap spaces here, which will be shared between employees and customers. Um, same thing. There is an existing employee entrance right here, which should be gated or not gated, keyed, and accessed only by employees. Um, so then, if there is a handicap uh, person customer, will come up this sidewalk and into the front of the building. So everything is right in this right there. area here. This is all the ninety-three. Uh, employee parking areas through that area. Assigned spots or you don't foresee a need for that for don't employees? Need for it. Yep. You know, at our current facility we have it set up where basically it's just reserve and visitor and then the rest of it's just general employee parking. Okay. Is that gonna be striped by any chance? I'm sorry? You're gonna have a striped? Yes, we're yes. gonna strike those. Yes. Yes. And you talked a little bit about lights earlier and I kind of, I, I want you to repeat it a little bit because I kind of heard that maybe in the back of the lot you were afraid that there wasn't sufficient lighting. Correct. Can you point Correct. that out so, again? So currently, if you drive by, uh, there's lighting, light poles here, here, and here to illuminate the sidewalk. Yeah. There's um, a light pole here at the corner, yeah. and on either side of the okay. gated entrance, this is a gated, um, yeah. So it's, they can shut it and close it off um, for access into it. It's currently set up that way. There's a chain link fence that runs around that whole front of the, the facility. So what we need to look at is 
This provides lighting for the entranceway and lighting coming in to this area here where we don't have lighting currently is for the employee parking. So oh, that's something you guys are going to look at, and I think I mean I think there's a couple things here we may need them to come back with. So I think that yeah. that seems like something. So, right. So that's you know that's something that we would need to look at um, whether we can do it with wall packs uh, or we need some additional new LED lighting poles. poles. Or if there are wall packs existing on the building too that correct are could be there, yeah. and not functioning properly or shut off because it's been vacant. Right. But I know driving by, if you drive by after the meeting, yeah. you'll, you'll see that this is... The, it's well lit. lit in the front. Yeah, yeah. it's well lit. Yeah, it's well lit in the front. Um, it covers what I have. I've got some potential. You're going to be able to lock us down on a weekend, like on a Sunday? You're not going to be working on Sunday, I wouldn't think. No, huh? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be yes. good for business, but right. even tiring. You're going to be working Saturdays? You probably might work Saturdays, I would think, right? There's we, a possibility. We, we try to occasionally, but it's... Yeah. it's relatively rare. Yeah. We try to avoid it whenever we can because yeah, we want our employees to have us to work Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the idea behind the so gate too is to use that whenever yeah. whenever the last shift exits, whatever yeah. manager is leaving last will lock that up to secure the facility. Um, Mark mentioned the gate. Uh, <coughs> is that something that's generally going to be open during the retail hours or do, do employees yeah, have open, key access or how does that work? That gate will be open during any normal business hours. So basically, you know, whoever, again, manager usually shows up first open the gate and allow the other employees to come in and then the last one out, lock it up behind them. So in theory, if you have three shifts, it will just be in open? Theory, it would just be open. Okay. Yeah. Or on the weekends, it would be closed. Right. Yes. Right. Right. Okay. Right. That would be alarmed during the weekends or at night? The gate uh, itself, I don't know if it would be, to tell you the truth. I know the building itself will be. I believe the gate uh, currently just has padlock. Yeah, it looks like yeah. a padlock. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just a standard. Um, it's no removal. We touch base. Yeah, yeah, we it's did. Yeah, yeah, snow removal. Yeah, I, I, I just. Uh, and I think that's that. another thing that I mean, if you're already coming back with other stuff, I think yeah, it probably makes sense. Be we'll, in there we'll anyway. have it marked. Yeah, I think it's it's in the narrative. It's just not on the site plan. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and just for the record, um, the fire department, I guess, was the only other department that responded, and they had no objections. So. Um, Things that stood out for me that I'd like to see covered. Uh, you know, more specifics on our sure. the lighting in the back end of the lot. Yeah. Yes. That the catch basins are in fact going to be clean. Yeah. There's sort of a stipulation I, that needs to be in the wording. Right. Um, well, you could also condition that. We can condition. I mean, you could, you could certainly. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't feel like they would need to come back. Yeah. I think that's something that, and we've done, or the board has done that in the past, is condition right. that the well, storm that the catch basins will be cleaned on a regular basis. Right. Suggest that maybe some of those could be uh, conditioned, but I'm not sure. Let me get through the list, and we'll find out if any of them, in fact, have to go up. Or, or I mean, you may have some too, of course. But uh, Mark, do you know that tie and bond packet uh, mentions cleaning up the storm drains at the current facility? Um, it talks about uh, within the building itself. Okay. Yeah, it talks general. about within. I didn't see anything. Right. Okay. It talks about general compliance with the. Uh, Regulations and mass right. for stormwater management policy. Sure. You may so just have to go into a little uh, more deeper. Sure. So my third one was to ensure that the internal drainage is sealed. I think that's important. Yes. That's our plans anyways. We well, and I think there's going to be a new system installed, right? So I, th right. Right. You, I mean, how long is that going to take? Do you know what you're going to do? Is that something that you would do before this process? Before my understanding you is that when ArgoTech bought the building from J.P. Stevens, it had already been sealed off. Um, we just wanted to make it clear to you folks that that's our we want there to be no chance that anything in there gets out, right? <laughs> But will there be a new internal drainage system installed? No. 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 So the plan is to simply cap off, make sure that it's complete. Make sure that, that existing okay. system that's it within the building is capped and does not exit. Yeah, you had mentioned that okay. you were going to concrete over it anyways. Right. How, how, now, how are you heating this place? <laughs> we're still working on that because <laughs> the building itself virtually has no heat. Argotech and J.P. Stevens used the machinery on site to produce the heat for the winter. Um, we're looking at redoing the AC units that are currently there and buying ones that have heat incorporated in them as well. Well, I was going to say, if you're going to go to oil heat, you're going to need to put an oil tank in there somewhere. Right. Well, the building currently has gas for heat. Yeah, so we <coughs> plan on utilizing the existing gas system that's in there and just tapping off of that for our new heating facility. Okay. Luckily, that's not part of the exemption for 
yeah. new services. Right. It's yeah. Existing service. So. So I mean the the lights, the cleaning, the catch patients, the ensuring the uh, initial drainage is sealed. I wouldn't mind conditioning those. Well, but but that I will see what else when they have. come back. I mean I guess I mean I guess that's a question, right? So I mean we can obviously make it a condition that they that the catch patients are regularly inspected and cleaned, and we can make it a condition that they you know make sure that the internal drainage system is is you know capped and sealed. Um, I guess the only real question is whether we want to see a lighting plan. Or not? Yeah, that's the possibly. If you can, um, it seems to me the front is well lit, and all we're talking about is that there be sufficient lighting in the in the back of the live. Right, right, but I mean, if there's 60 employees on a third shift, what is I mean, you, I mean, obviously they have an interest in having it well lit as well, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I believe for I, example the loading dock I believe has lights on it too, which so you don't show up on that plan. It's just the pole. So that's in the very back so, of the right. building. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I, inspection, make sure I think it makes sense to see the lighting plan. Yeah, I, I just, would. I would like to see a lighting plan. Yeah. I mean, is, is that is that a real hardship for you folks to come back in a couple of weeks with a lighting plan, or um, at least letting us know what's there? We we can do that. Um, it mm. takes. If you're going to have a professional lighting plan done, they get into you know lumens and making sure that it's done properly. Mm -hmm. um, if you're looking for that level of detail, then you know that's going to take a little bit of time to send that off to a consultant. General to lighting. General lighting. I think if we general, general lighting. lighting. I think if you guys can. I mean, it sounds like we don't necessarily even know what's there right now. It might be helpful right. if you figure out what's there. Maybe turn on all the lights one night and see how it looks in the back corner of the lot and see what you might need sure. um, to give oh, yeah, us an idea. Yeah, there could be a lot of wall packs that are just shut off or not right. used or right. burnt out. I mean, I, th I think that that should give us a clear picture, clear enough to... Yeah. I mean, I would definitely be I looking agree. to see, yes, we're going to put up a light one or two in the back of that yeah. lot there, because right now there's, I mean, it's clear that even from the dock or from the front, there's nothing getting in that back. So right. I need to see some plan to put, and it doesn't have to be, uh, I agree, it doesn't need to be this, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, professional thing. Yeah. But it needs to, I, I need to know and mm -hmm. be able to stipulate that you're putting a couple lights in the back there. Yeah, that's, yeah that's I think we, we can, should. We do that. I mean, you know, one of the nice things with new LED lighting, it, it really is so efficient and, and it just lights up a, a great area so that, you know, where before you could, you could um, put in four or five light poles and you can put two LED lights in and it just lights up the whole area. So we can work towards that. Um, okay. Does the board want to see the lighting on 24-7 or are they okay with the lights being turned off at the end of the shift and when it's closed up? Sounds like there is no end when they're doing a third shift. So the goal is Well, to but there isn't a third shift yet. There isn't right. a I mean, third I think shift yet. I'm going to put my Enviro tree hugging hat on yeah. <laughs> and it's near wetlands and there are critters that get thrown off by um, right. lighting. There's also neighbors that are nearby. So I, I, yeah, there's a whole I agree that the parking lot needs to be safe, but I don't want it to be... So lit daylight. up that it's right. that it uh, ends up being a light nuisance to neighbors and also to <clears throat> the wildlife. Right. <laughs> so that's part of the challenge in what you deliver to us. <laughs> well, I think too. I mean, if you're talking about you know a second and third shift kind of scenario, mm -hmm. there's not retail traffic. You know, right. uh, presumably those may be smaller shifts. It's something that may be consolidated at the front end of the lot. Right. So maybe the you know you're not getting deliveries at the loading dock. Presumably, I mean, if, if those sort of things line up then you may not have the same need for light in the back. I guess not knowing what's actually there now sure. makes it hard for us to sort of make sure that that's safe. But I think Jessica's right. That, that back corner doesn't need to be light enough to, you know, to read a book by at right. 2 in the morning mm -hmm. if everyone's parked in the first 20 spots up by the front light. So I think if you can just give us some more information about that, that would you know, set me at ease to make sure that there isn't going to be a dangerous situation in some winter It'll night. Save you money in the long run. So right. You're not paying yeah. for electricity that you don't right. actually need. Right. And the papers are still happy. And the papers are happy. <laughs> See, I knew that I'd be able to. <laughs> Somebody cares about the paper for us. Yeah, the papers. So does anybody else, I mean, if they're coming back in two weeks, is there anything else that people yeah, are uh, here? How many truckers are you coming in out of there in a week's time? Um, oh, it's in there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's in there. So yeah. yeah. Right, I didn't look. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's in there. It's in there. Okay. <laughs> I was just curious about the top of my head. I'm looking at the next one. Yeah. It's pretty comprehensive. UPS uh, comes twice a day. Here Yeah, I saw it. Saw it. Sounded like I was sawing it. Saw it. So. 
Um, looking at it, yeah, what page um, I got like I said, we got UPS yeah, and FedEx like coming in and out. Uh, 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 tracks of trailer yeah. trucks. Uh, you know, we don't think we're we looking good. at, um, you know, 10 times a week for UPS, twice a day for FedEx mm -hmm. um, for the area. FedEx is like three times a week coming in and out depending on you know, how it's being shipped. Uh, vending trucks, would, which, which would be the, you know, once a week. Um, uniform trucks because they have employee uniforms or once a week. Um, other suppliers about 10 per week, so you get trash that comes in weekly probably or every other week. Um, and um, you know, looking at guests, five, so. So, I mean, it's not a, a heavy truck traffic. Um, looking at it, depending on how it grows, I mean, definitely at the beginning. Right. Um, you know, if you add that third, trucks a week. if you add that third shift, do you expect the the other deliveries to sort of increase, or is it more or less going to be the same kind of operation? Yeah, basically, they're just putting more stuff on the same trucks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't expect traffic to increase at all, really. Okay. So, folks, short of the lighting plan and the conditions we've talked about, obviously, we've, I mean, we've gotten assurances about the snow removal and that sort of thing that we can mm -hmm. make a condition as well. Is there any other information that you folks want to see the applicant come back with? No. No. I don't really. And everything in 12.79, I've kind of gone through as well. Right. Mm -hmm. We covered each topic. So. Chat, we good? Yeah, I think we did. We covered it quite a lot. Okay, quite so well. if, you, if you folks can come back, I mean. What do you think would be appropriate time? We are in a meeting, um, it's going to be three. March 1st, first? I believe. Yes. So in two weeks, I don't know if that's enough time for you or not. So we meet the 1st and the 15th of March. I think we could come back in the first and, okay. and have the plan ready. Um, like I said, um, adding the snow storage areas is not a, a large area. Lighting is probably the, the most time consuming. <coughs> Excuse me, and we can we can address that. Okay. Ensuring the internal drainage. Great. So I just want to make sure that I, I don't want them to have to come back. No, I agree, and that's why I think. So just a lighting plan and. Um, well, I yeah, think we'll, the other we'll things. Check the internal drainage system to make sure it's. Right. No, if you want to, yeah, check the stormwater, and if you, I don't know, are you going to create a different plan for the lighting plan, or are you going to put it on your existing site plan? We'll probably add it to. Okay, so plan. if you do that, you might as well just want to add the snow storage yes. locations. Right. Yes, we will. And was there anything else that needed to be on the plan? The contours from uh, for the uh, the, ADA. the ADA spots. ADA. Yeah, ADA. Let's put those on the plan Spot too. Grades, yeah. So right. if you're got to change the site plan anyway, you're not. Just yep. put that stuff on, and then that covers yeah. that. I think that's everything. I think the only other yeah. things are things. Yeah. I mean, we can I don't condition. Think there's anything can condition else. the cleaning of the, the catch, catch basins. basins. <laughs> as long as there's no other questions on the stormwater right. plan. You know, as far as cleaning the catch basins and everything like that, is after they purchase the property, they'll right. hire a right. professional uh, company to come in and clean them professionally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm just I mean, we we just a uh, timetable as to once a right. year. Yep. You know, and have it on the plan that it'll be. Right. Mm -hmm. You guys are uh, doing your own landscaping? Are you cutting your own grass and your bushes and stuff? Or are you going to no, be hiring somebody? We currently or? use a landscaping uh, company. Uh, we use default landscaping at West Camden in their current facility. Okay. All right, any other questions at this point? So we need a motion to Mo continue. Motion the to continue the, uh, the request for special permit for 412 Main Street Yankee Hill Machine till March 1st. Our next meeting, is that correct? Yep, at yeah. 6 p.m. At 6 p.m. Second. Right. One, one, one question. Well, yeah, we oh. act on it. I don't know if there's anybody here that you know, Sure. Mr. Cernak's in the butter or to the rear of the property. Yeah, okay. Any, any comments or questions? Thank you. Uh, that's a good point. Thank you. Any, any comments or questions, sir? No, none. Okay. All right, so we had a motion and a second. Yep. All in favor? I have a second. Chat. Thank you. 